Pán Valdrice má aj konzultantom v oblasti rozvoja stanic verejnej osobnej dopravy a parkovania bicyklov na staniciach a my sme túto tému priniesli práve kvôli tomu, že súčasťou toho veľkého balíka peňazí, ktoré by mali prísť z hľadiska plánu obnovy, je aj 5 miliónov eur zameraných na parkovanie na železničných staniciach. Pán Vaut, Ricema, pôsobí v tejto oblasti už vyše 20 rokov pre samozprávy, pre holandské miestrstvo infraštruktúry, pre železnice, NS a ProRail. Podielal sa na vývoj a zlepšovaní naozaj obrovského množstva staníc typovo rôznorodých, napríklad od navrhovania malých parkovisk pre bicykle pod holým nebom v Amsterdame, cez stredne veľké kryté parkoviska pre bicykle v Almere, až po veľké podzemné parkoviska pre bicykle v mestách ako Amsterdam, Cvole, Eindhoven a Leiden. Je spoluátorom knihy Bike Parking at Train Stations, 20 years of design, development and realization a prichádza na rôzne miesta, na rôzne konferencie, aby sa podelil o svoje skúsenosti a aj ďalšia rečnička, ktorú potom predstavím, bude hovoriť na ďalak podobnú tému. So, floor is yours, please go on. Thank you. I'll just switch my headset off. Makes it easier for me. Yes. Good morning, everybody. It's hot here, <laughs> but it's shady over there, so you're the lucky guys in the end, in the back. Uh, maybe later. Yes, maybe later. I'll start like this and I'll take it off later. First of all, thanks so much for the invitation and welcome uh, your honorable guests and the participants of this uh, conference. Um, Yes, I'm from the Netherlands, and uh, a lot of things have been said about the Netherlands. Uh, so I will start with a huge disclaimer before my presentation starts. Please do not copy anything. Copying things from another country is pretty dangerous, so please don't do that. But learn. Try to learn from our mistakes. We made many, many, many mistakes over the last 20 years. Anyone to... Um, We want you not to make those mistakes uh, as we did. So, a lot of lessons learned. Um, I call it recipes for success, but as you know, with recipes, when you are going to cook, you know the ingredients and there's a recipe, but what comes out in the end, it's all going to be up to you. So, I wish you all the best with cooking uh, over the next, next years. Um, a lot of things have been said about <coughs> myself already, a lot of expertise in station development and bike parking. And I have to say this sounds for many people a bit strange combination, but um, bike parking is an, in the Netherlands an integral part of the responsibility of the railway company. So the railway company, both the owners of the railway tracks and the buildings, ProRail, and Uh, the railway company NS, the Dutch Railways, they have a joint responsibility in developing and maintaining uh, the bike parkings at stations. So there's a lot to be learned from them and I'm really happy that I've been working for them a lot over the last uh, 20 years. Um, I wrote a book about it with a, a, a colleague of mine, Folkert. Uh, Folkert resigned but I'm still around. The book is published last year, and it is about those 20 years of experience. It's in Dutch. The chapters are in English uh, summarized, so uh, feel free to, uh, to, uh, to buy it if you like. Um, and the book is full of examples, good examples, bad examples, drawings, pictures, um, the next, well, this is one of the huge uh, bike parkings there, currently developed in Amsterdam underneath the water. Um, and there's a good example there on the left, where th this looks like a station building, but in fact it's a cycle. It's a bike, bike, uh, bike garage in Amsterdam. So, um, but that, I will leave to that. You can read the book about that. So, cycling in the Netherlands. I have to, I have to start with this, because we have something with bikes. Um, The amb ambassador already mentioned some figures. Uh, we have 70 million inhabitants. 
many, many more bikes. Um, I have like three bikes in the shed. Uh, my wife also has three bikes, so it's a bit crowded in the shed for our bikes. Um, and a lot of journeys are made by a bike. Um, and there is, we have 400 railway stations and a lot of railway tracks. So, and that is an important thing to mention because along at the railway stations, there is a lot of bike parking uh, being developed over the last years. And we have uh, many train travelers per day, like more than one million. And just half of them come by bike. Just, just imagine that, that half of everybody who is taking the train uh, cycles to the station. So that's what we call sort of summum of sustainable mobility. And we are really, really proud of that. When we started with this program like 20 years ago, this figure was only maybe 10 or 20 percent. So it went up really, really rapidly. And we have some famous um, cyclists there, uh, Tom Dumoulin doing uh, for the cyclists there, and the Giro, Giro at the moment, he's doing pretty well, I think, I hope. And this, of course, our king and our queen, they cycle and they're proud to show. And as ambassador said, even our prime minister cycle, everybody cycles. So for us, it's a sort of second nature. And if you look at OpenStreetMap and look at the cycle paths in Europe, you can see the Netherlands there in the sort of big red dot there and Slovakia there. So you're getting there. And this is going to be dark red in a few years, I, I promise you. So we cycle. So we need a lot of bike parking, because if you cycle, if you finally have the people on their bikes, then where do they leave them once they are at their destination? So let's share some knowledge about that with you. And in the end, you have plenty of time to ask some, uh, some, some questions. I want to take you down with, uh, to the quality and the quantity leap that we made in, in bike parking at uh, train stations because there was a big leap uh, to make. So let's go back into the, the 90s, where the situation was like this. There were more and more cars on the road. Every city was designed for cars, 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 cars. Um, but there were also more accidents, and there was more pollution and more awareness of the environment. Um, and what we saw then, back then, was that both the quality and the quantity of uh, the bike parking was bad. I say mediocre, but most of them were pretty bad. They were just broken, or the bikes were there for like months, and nobody was taking them. Um, and there was a growing need for bike parking because there was a lot of a big increase in train passengers. So if there are more people tra traveling by train, uh, more people want to take their bike to the train, so that, in, that increased uh, rapidly, and is still increasing. Um, and what's also increasing is the use of bikes. So people cycle more. So if you add those two developments together, then you know that you need a lot of bike parking in the future. Um, what happened in the, in the 90s, what there was political support and budget. And there I see some similarities with you uh, here in Slovakia. Because uh, we started in the 90s with a nationwide uh, program. The, pro the program called uh, Bicycle Parking at Stations. Um, it had like two or three different names, but in the end that's, that's about what the name was. And the political support was very important. We had a minister, we had a member of parliament, we had a very active uh, a cycle uh, organization like you have here, and they, they did a really, really good job on promoting and uh, raising the awareness of the need to be more aware of, uh, of cycling. So the program started in 1999, more than 20 years ago, and the initiator was the ministry of infrastructure, um, because the responsibility of um, bike parking at stations is there at the ministry, and uh, on behalf of the ministry, it is the organization called ProRail. ProRail owns the tracks, uh, the stations, and the, most of the bike parkings at stations. So ProRail organized uh, 
the development of the bike parkings and have been organizing it until today. Um, so how was the financing? It's very interesting to learn about that. We started off with 100% investment um, by the ministry. So the ministry said that they were aware of the fact that uh, cycling needed to have a boost. So instead of saying, well, we need some money from the city council, they said, okay, in the beginning we pay everything. We invest in you and we want you to, to go along with it as a city council. Uh, but that's changed because of the popularity of the program, because many, many projects um, evolved after that. So from 2008, so let's say 10 years later, the ministry said, well, we need to go into co-financing. So the ministry said, uh, we pay 50% and you pay the other 50%. And in the beginning it was, we pay 60% and you as a city council pay 40%. And it's very important to have that co-financing on the... Uh, in the mind of the organizations because that also gives a sort of common responsibility, a sort of shared responsibility uh, to work towards uh, better bike parkings. Um, and the aim was clear, is to improve and to increase the bicycle use by train travelers. The combination bike-train was a very, very, very important and, and it's still a very important combination. So as of today, we have already realized 500,000 places, bike parkings in the, in the Netherlands, um, where we started off with, I think it was like 200,000. Uh, and we spent a lot of money on that as well. So as a consequence of that, the bicycle use to the station grew from that 20, 30% to almost half, uh, which it is to, uh, today. So a lot of people ask, what is, is there a recipe of success? What is, what is the recipe? Can we just use it? Can we copy it? I'm always a bit um, constrained. I'm not too eager to, to, to say this is what you should do, but what, do you, what you can learn is that there was a strong vision of the solution. We, we say um, that the bike train combination is key. So if you think of bikes, if you think of improving uh, sustainable mobility with trains, always think with, uh, 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 with the bike infrastructure, cycle paths and bike parkings. Um, we had a nationwide program in finance and the ambition was really, really high. So both from the form of the bicycle parkings as, uh, as how they were functioning and we will get into that more, uh, more uh, deeper uh, later. And what people saw that was when we started to increase uh, the bike parkings around the train stations, what people saw was that the spatial quality of the station area improved as well. So there were more and more good examples and people went like, oh, so instead of all the rubbish around the station, this is a really beautiful area. And it started off with a bike parking project and now it's, it's a very nice, interesting area around the station. And we have many examples of that, and I'll show you some pictures. I have many pictures later to, to, to share. Also, a very important within the program, national-wide program, is a joint effort. So the ministry, the provinces, the city councils, ProRail and National Dutch Railways working together, own with their own responsibility. And that is typical Dutch way. That's something that you can't copy. So do it your way, uh, but we did it uh, our, our way. Um, and very important of the program, we developed the program constantly. The program we started in 1999 is totally different than it is today. Because we learned, we made many, many mistakes, and we tried a lot of things which didn't work. So after that we said, hmm, so um, the lanes should, shouldn't be three meters wide, they can be two meters wide, okay, and so let's make them two meters, or the other way around. So we learn a lot and we developed a lot. That's very important to, uh, to address. So what is the ultimate bike train combination? Well, of course you need a good functioning railway system with a frequent timetable, with sufficient seats in the trains, pleasant railway stations, and also safe infrastructure for cyclists and good bicycle parking facilities at stations. And what's very important is to have the knowledge what is important 
to the traveler, and we go into detail that uh, later. And over the last five or ten years, a good rental bike system for the last mile. That's a very important element of the, um, of the combination. So understanding the cycling train traveler, what do we need to understand? What we need to understand is what cyclists like the best. And I assume that you're all cyclists and you know this, you know this. So cyclists always want the shortest and the quickest road from A to B. No zigzagging, no, no turnarounds and roundup, no, straight away. Short and quick. And where do they want to park their bike? as close as B as possible, preferably on top of B. And I'll show you some examples of that. So how do cyclists want to park the bike? They want it to be quick. And quick means that you have to have bicycle parking as close as possible to the depart platform. And the, the best example of that is this. This is the platform and this is the bike parkings. <coughs> this is what cyclists want straight to the station, and once on the station, park the bike there and take the train. This is a dream of, of many, many cycling train travelers. And once you develop stations, <coughs> like here in the city of Houghton, we decided to put the bicycles underneath the platform. So if there's no space alongside it, do it underneath, and just take the stairs on top to go to the platform really successful combination. So cyclists wanted, want speed. And a good example of that, if you develop a new station, this is the station of Arnhem, huge station. This is the city hall, and this is the bike parking. It's underneath the city hall. This is how we think at the moment. If you build a station, okay, what do we, where do we leave the bikes? That's almost the first question. Uh, nowadays. Um, and as I said, quickly, cyclists want it to be quickly, is that you always, if, if the bike parkings get bigger, and they get bigger, um, QR codes help to find your bike back easy. I don't think that's an issue here yet, but this will be uh, in the near future. Secondly, what uh, cyclists um, like, prefer, need, is, is a parking to be free. Because if, as soon as you raise the price, or as soon as you have to pay, um, only 10% of all the cyclists choose to pay for guarded parking. So if you have guarded parking, which you have to pay, and you have free parking, only 10% in the Netherlands take the paid parking. We, we, we don't like that. We want, because uh, if it's, possible to be free, we want it to be free. So free, far, free parking or a price that is as low as possible. And even one euro per day, 125 per day, for a lot of people that is in the end, it's not a, a, a big amount per day, but if you are parking there every day, it's going to be a lot. Um, oh, sorry, that was too quick. So if you want a bike parking uh, for, uh, to be free, then you also have to have a system that's, um, that enables you uh, to park your car there for free. And in the Netherlands, we have a transport card, a public transport card uh, with a, a RFID chip in there. And you can enter the bike parking with that chip card so that the system knows, ah, you're here. And once you leave, after one day, then you can park there for free. But if you've parked there for two days, the system knows, hey, you're here for more than one day, then you have to pay. Because the first day is free. That's a very um, important new concept we developed a few years ago, and that's really, really successful. The first day should be free if you want to have paid parking. Make the first day for free, and the second and the third day, uh, you pay per day. The third thing that uh, people find very important is parking to be safe, obviously. Safe for the bicycle, but also safe for the, for the people. So safe for the bicycle, you don't want it to be stolen or being broken or vandalized. 
but you also want it to have a good feeling because if it's dark and you can't find your way, uh, people don't like to use bike parkings in the dark. So you have to think of the design of the bike parkings with clear overviews, intuitive wayfinding, and all that, all those things. We we will go into that into more detail. And what we have in the Netherlands, 400 stations, is that every railway station has both a guarded and a non guarded bicycle parking. So it is, and guarded could be like lockers. So we have lockers. Uh, or we have uh, stations, this is the bigger stations, the biggest, uh, bigger bike parkings, where we have staff. And that's, the, the, these are the two examples of uh, pay, and there is another one, and I'll show that later. So after, quick, safe, um, and um, for free. Dry parking is very important. People want to have dry saddles when they return from their train travel. Um, and our ambition in the Netherlands is to have every bike parking to offer the opportunity to, uh, to park dry. And most used is these little roofs there with light uh, over, the, over the bike bike racks. That's, that's uh, used almost at uh, every uh, station in the Netherlands. And of course, if you have a bigger underground parkings, obviously that's dry as well. That's a very important thing. And apart from those issues, the last one is a pleasant setting. So instead of focusing on the bike parking, which we did like 20 years ago, we learned that you shouldn't only look at that small stamp of the bike parking, look around you, see what the area is where you have that bike parking. And that should be a, a pleasant area. It should be clean, no vandalism, because if people see vandalism somewhere, they don't want to, 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 use their, uh, to park their bike there. No nasty smells, attractiveness, and easy accessibility. So that's very important for the traveler. So that's if we go to um, take this next step towards the, um, the, par the parking itself. Uh, we just looked at the people and what they find important. And now let's have a look at the racks. Um, this is the most common bike rack that we have in the Netherlands. Um, most bike parkings at train stations have these uh, tulips. It's, uh, it's a Dutch, Dutch company. Uh, Velopa, and you can bike your park uh, high and low. You can fix the lock here. Oh, that's a nice combination of tulips and bikes, by the way. Uh, but uh, that's that's a that's a coincidence. And uh, the distance that we use is um, uh, 357 millimeters uh, between the um, between the racks. And that distance hasn't been hasn't changed for 20 years. So we decided to do that. Uh, two years ago, we decided mm, it should be a little bit wider. And now we have a standard is uh, 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 39 centimeters. So that's a new standard because bikes are getting, getting bigger and wider. Um, as you can see in the back, this is very, very commonly used in spaces that are really uh, scarce, multi-layered uh, bike racks. Uh, with the, the length of uh, 1.9 meters and the sizes of uh, uh, 75 and a half or now uh, 39 centimeters heart to heart. So from here to here, so then you know how many bikes you have per square meter. And we have special racks for uh, odd size bikes. We have many bikes with child seats or crates and they need more space. So we have two main uh, examples of that. And this is an example of, uh, of a multi-layered different brand from that you can see behind. Uh, but the system works uh, exactly uh, the same. And if you have uh, an odd size bike, like crates, like this, crates or child seats, we have racks that are a little bit higher and wider. So people use it. And that's very important because if they park their bike on the other bike parking, they use two spaces instead of one. So that's very important. 
Um, we work with colors as well. Um, sorry, it's a bit slow now. Um, it helps people to orient and to do it quick. Is now we, we're trying to see if the color blue works for all size bikes. It's just an experiment, and if it's not, if, if it's not working, we we stop it. But we we want to know if it works, if it helps in the orientation, and to have the right bike in the right spot. Um, and what we see over the last few years is a large increase for special bikes, um, especially when uh, the people are getting older. There are more invalid bikes, cargo bikes, um, uh, electric uh, bikes for elderly. So we need more space, which are wider, so no racks, but special uh, spaces for, for, this, uh, for these people. So I was asked to, to show some best practices. And once again, disclaimer, don't copy it. It's a best practice. Just so try to learn uh, what it means to, uh, to you. So I'm going to go into that, the types of bike parking here and show you the best practices in my point of view. We have five different uh, bike parkings. The most used, most common bike parking is this one. At street level, as you can see here as well, 60% of every bike rack in the Netherlands is just parked on the street. So a lot of people know the example I'll show you later of the, the biggest bike parking in the world with 12,500 bikes. Yes, we have that. But most bikes are stored on the streets, as you can see, 60% of them. The second category is the flats. That's multi-layered with no staff, but you can, have, you can store many bikes there in a small, small square meters. And different, the third type is um, the bike parking building with roofs and walls and mostly staff, sometimes with, uh, with gates, so unstaffed but still guarded. The fourth type is underground parking. You see that more and more in the Netherlands uh, underneath the station squares. Huge, huge underground parkings of three, four, five thousand uh, bikes. But that increases, as I said, the area of the station uh, amazingly. And the Mecca, of course, that's the fifth. So how do they look like? I'll show you some examples of that. So the first type, street level parking. This is what you see at almost every station. Uh, street level parking, mostly multi-layered. Uh, that's for us, that's the, that's the standard in combination with the tulips I showed you earlier. Um, the lockers and the roofs, that's, that are the, the main characteristics of the street level, uh, street, uh, level uh, parking. The big advantage is it's really quick, it's, it's cheap to develop, you don't need any staff, and you're very quick at the, at the train. Look at that. You can't, be, you can't be closer to your train than that, can you? So, second type. Look at my clock there. Uh, now, sorry, an another example of a street level parking. Almost at the platform, almost, but you need a small stair. But we're really happy with that, if, if possible, uh, to have that so close to the trains. So this is a bit bigger picture, as I just uh, showed you, uh, at Deeren. Um, I really like this one. This is a really good example. Once you have the chance, just because you have all the types here, you have the tulips, the multi-layered, the lockers, the small roofs, the high roofs, because multi-layered, you need higher roofs. Um, so second type is we have about 10 bike flats in the Netherlands. And what is a bike flat? A bike flat is a place where, where you have multi-layered, multi-layers, and you sort of cycle like that from one floor to the other, or you walk from one floor to the other. We have, we have a, quite a few uh, of those examples in the, in, in the Netherlands, mostly unstaffed. The good example, good advantage is that you have many bikes in a very uh, small uh, space. This is Apeldoorn and this is uh, Zaandam. Um, 
And another example of a bike flat here is the first bike flat in the Netherlands. It's built around the year 2000 already, like 20 years ago. It's at uh, the city of Hengelo, and you can see here how it works. You, you walk up there, you, you bike, you, you, you park your bike there, or go on to the next level and take the stairs straight down to the trains. I think the most photographed bike flat in the Netherlands, if you go to Amsterdam, um, this is going to go away, it's going to disappear because the bike parking is going to be underneath the water, the, the boats are here. Um, so this is a bike flat that's, um, that has that stores uh, more than 2,000 bikes uh, in Amsterdam. And this is the latest one, very recent, recently developed at Zandam. Really nice design, open light in the color of the Dutch national football team, so I like that. And this is one of the first, uh, was, I think it's about the second bike flat that we have, in the, in the shape of an apple. Five minutes? Yeah. You go up like that and down with a staircase uh, straight away. This is a good example of the parking building. You see the, the light and the routing in there, the city of Amsterdam. So we have a lot of integral uh, parkings underneath the station. Combinations of, of uh, paid parking indoor and free parking on top. That's also a combination. So there are some, some nice combinations possible. And this is a good example of um, a parking building where there's no staff but there are gates, so you use your, your chip card, public transport chip card, uh, and park your bike there, and it's guarded with, uh, with cameras. And this is what it looks like. Inside, it's being used a lot. Underground parking, as I said, more and more. I'll go uh, a, bit, a little bit quicker there, underneath the big uh, station square to go down, as I just showed earlier in the city of Houghton, underneath the platform, and there's an underground parking in a very nice area here. <coughs> this is one of the latest underground parkings I've been working on in, in Zwolle. It's really nice. This is the, just before the opening, that's why there are no bikes, but uh, this is what we develop uh, at, at the moment a lot. And same here in, in Leiden. Underground parking means challenges. How steep do we need the stairs? How wide, etc. I'm not going to bother you with, uh, with those questions therefore later. And also dealing with safety. If you go underneath the, the floor, how do we develop a safe, a safe parking? And of course, as I mentioned earlier, just a quick look at the mega parking in Utrecht. You cycle there through the parking um, with cycle lanes, three levels, uh, and there's even a through lane from one side of the city to, uh, to the other, and it's connected to the station straight away. Now, what are elements of success? Very important, careful plan development, cost analysis, uh, parking layouts is very important, the free charge, uh, the use of the monitoring system that we have, signage, you know, how to find your way, and, and bike sharing, and just uh, some examples of that. If you go, come to the workshop this afternoon to uh, Trnava station, uh, we're going to de detail how the plan development works, what questions that you have to, have to ask. Uh, you have to look at origin and destination, uh, the model splits, you have to understand how the cycling traveler thinks and travels and parks. And for the biggest parkings, of course, we do a lot of simulation stuff, but that's for the, for the big parkings, not, not for the smaller ones. A lot of people ask us, what about the costs? It depends. I just can't mention one figure. It's very local. Uh, but for ground level parkings, the price is raised uh, somewhere between 400 and 1500 euros. Um, and the, the bigger, the more expensive uh, per, per bike, obviously. We have a lot of experience in parking layouts, um, so that's very important, not just once you have the bike parking, how, uh, what's the ultimate layout that you, uh, that you need? So we have uh, quite a few experience, uh, experiences with that, also bad experiences. Um, the 24 hours free of charge regime, 
I mentioned to, uh, that earlier to you. The use of the chip card is very uh, important in that. And for the bike parking, the detective, uh, the monitoring system, it helps you to find a free spot. Maybe you know it from uh, car parks. So we have it in the, big, the biggest um, uh, bike parkings as well, to find your free spots there. But it also helps the owner and the maintainer of the bike parking to see, uh, to find the bikes that are being parked there too long, and he takes them out. And we developed a common signage for, 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 uh, for parkings. Um, sharing bike system. Um, yeah, just an example, just to mention it, that it's, this, is, this is coming up really rapidly over the last few years. Many companies offer bike sharing uh, close to the station, and I think that's a very good development, because the more bike sharing, in the end, we guess you need less bike parking. So that could be a very interesting new, um, new development. Finally, what does not work? What does not work? We have a lot of bad examples, and I summed them up here. Um, parking facilities too far from the station. Don't do that. It's a waste of money. We see many bike parkings empty, very expensive parkings empty, and they look amazing, but they're just too far. The quality, if the, if the quality of the free parking is so good, it's better than the paid parking. Why should I park in the paid parking? Too high prices, we experimented in that. Two euros, three euros. People don't park in parkings for two, three euros. One, 125 per day maximum. The design, we have a lot of experience in steepness and curves. We sometimes, we, we had a curved entrance to, to, to a bike park. But the back wheel went out of the, out of the slope. Out of the slope. So, bad idea. Um, dead end paths. Don't do that. People don't like that because they want to be able to escape. Dark parkings. People don't like that. Um, sometimes we did it because of the birds and stuff. But people said, oh, I'm, "I'm not going to park in a in a bike park where it's too dark." So, there's a lot of light there. Too small parking, uh, parking spaces, so if it's too narrow, people don't park there. Um, we, in the beginning, we had sh uh, shelf racks, like you see there in the back, like multi-layered, without a lifting system. Well, that was one of the biggest mistakes in the beginning. You should have a very smooth lifting system. Um, and enforcement, once the bike parking is there, make sure that you don't get orphan bikes. We call them orphan bikes, bikes with no parents. You, you, nobody knows who the owner is, and it's there for ages. And um, if you organize bike parkings, um, do it together. You need uh, each other. And finally, um, parking facilities closing before the last train. It sounds really silly, but sometimes we did it. And people got really, really annoyed and angry about that. So what does work? To summarize, think carefully about the future demand, the user groups, who are you building it for, the lo right location, the type of bike parking, the size of it, the type of regime that you have, staffed, unstaffed, lockers, uh, and the quality. And this will create extra uh, use. Thank you. Thank you very much. You have mentioned at the beginning that don't repeat this, but is there any one certain specific, specific important thing you would really recommend to repeat from your lecture? Spýtala som sa na Margot toho úvodu, že neopakujte to, čo sme robili my, neopakujte naše chyby, že či je jedna vec, ktorá je prenosná, ktorú by odporúčal Vaud zopakovať? Yes, a good question. The most important thing is um uh, don't go too fast in um, in de um, developing the bike parking. A lot of we have examples that uh, there is a free space, and the city says, "Oh yeah, I'm going to make a bike parking there." 
But you have to think very good, where are the people coming from? Where, um, is it the right place? Is it the right size? So there are many questions to ask before you choose the right spot. So that's, if you, people are interested in that question, uh, come to the workshop this afternoon. Thank you very much. Dáme si ešte jednu, dve otázky, keď tu máme Volta na podiu, takže ak niekto sa chce teda spýtať. A, a výborne, tu je jedna ruka vpravo a tuto vlastne pán v modrom tričku, druhá ruka. Takže dáno tuto, nech sa páči úplne vpravo, svetlé tričko a potom v štvrtom hrade modré tričko s krátkými rukávmi. Hello, a thanks pokojne sa môže predstaviť, please introduce yourself. Uh, Peter Terpak. Um, I have a question, thanks a lot for the presentation. I would be actually wondering how you approached, especially in the beginning of this program, like maybe 15-20 years ago, the issue of the bike theft. Uh, related to that. <laughs> so, so I'm wondering how you addressed, uh, especially in the beginning of the program, before there were chip cards for public transport and these kind of things, uh, how you address the bike theft issue, because that's one of the somehow inhibitors of all these efforts. If basically you come to the station with the bike, you don't find it. So did you have this issue? And if so, how were you addressing that previously? Thank you. Um, I'm just checking if I understand. I'm just checking if I understand the question right. Is it the question on how to find your bike? How to address bike theft? So basically, stealing of theft. the bike. Theft. Yes. Ah, how to address bike theft? Preventions, interventions. Yes, yes. Um, there are there are uh, certain levels on on bike theft prevention. Um, it begins, of course, with the awareness of the people who stole the bike. Uh, we have, um, in places where there's a lot of theft, we have signs, just signs saying, uh, beware of your bike, or uh, just be aware that there is theft here. Uh, we experimented with uh, signs with, with eyes, two eyes, just a picture of two eyes, because from a psychological research, it's known that pe people don't like eyes. Well, they think I'm being watched, so it's, it helps uh, the people who want to steal it to, 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 have the, to increase the feeling I'm, I'm, being, I'm being watched, so that's, a, that's, a, that's a, an example. We have racks where you can um, uh, attach the bike really carefully, that's important. Uh, at the bigger uh, bike park is cameras, we have cameras. Um, and of course, um, if you develop a bike parking in a station area where you know it's unsafe, then you have to design a safe bike parking. You're not going to, to make just, just uh, bike parkings on the street. You have to think more about it. Maybe, maybe a building uh, with gates or uh, with staff, something like that. Yeah. So we are really aware of, of, uh, of theft. Thank you. <coughs> Hello, uh, my name is Andrei Stefanik and I have uh, one question for you. In your presentation you mentioned a lot of times um, bikes with uh, train stations, basically. And I wonder if uh, there would be a possibility to have this kind of bike revolution without these uh, train stations. <coughs> That's a very good question. It's also a very tricky one because the fact that in the Netherlands the bike parking is a responsibility of the train company and the railway companies, <coughs> that's why it's so strongly interlinked. So that's why there is the money, there is the knowledge. <coughs> I've got the same problem here with, <laughs> with the pollen. So, and um, there, <coughs> there's also... <coughs> if it helps, so please do come downstairs. I will give you my, my mic. Yeah. <coughs> because this is dangerous yes. here. <laughs> it looks really silly, but it's, uh, there's something in the air here. Yes. I'm getting like really em emotional about the question. <laughs> Um, yes, the thing is, uh, yes, you can learn. Uh, you can learn about the layouts, uh, about designing a safe, a safe uh, parking. 
Uh, but the bike parking at train stations is also designed around uh, the fact that, that there are many peaks. There, um, if, you, if you design bike parking in a shopping mall, there is no peak at nine o'clock. If you go and design a bike parking around a train station, you know that there's a lot of people uh, <coughs> uh, wanted to, to bike, to park their bike at the same time, in the same place, so a bike tower isn't always a good solution when you have peaks. So uh, I'm really interested to, to see and to hear this afternoon how the bike tower here at the station functions because you have waiting lines and, and technical uh, issues. Is it work? Okay. Just uh, I wonder because uh, from Trnava to Bratislava, uh, to capital city, a lot of people are commuting every day. And a lot of people are using cars, you know. Mm. So uh, I wonder if they will, if the bike revolution is possible, if they will still use the cars between Trnava and Bratislava. That's that's what I wonder. There's two things that you need to do in changing their behavior, in my opinion. The first one is to make it absolutely attractive uh, <coughs> on. Uh, using the combination bike and train. So you have to do everything to make that attractive in the first place. Uh, and at the same time, what you need to do is to make it unattractive to go by car to their destination. So for instance, if you have, if the top rows at the station are cars instead of bikes, then you already know that's the wrong signal. The top row like in in a cinema or if you go to the theater the top row are the best places so uh, you need to have the bikes at the front of the station that's how you create a good signal okay thanks musíme pokračovať ešte bola jedna otázka okay the last one hi uh, my name is peter netri um, i would like to ask about uh, how you approach stations which are only for commuting to other bigger cities, for example, Trnava to commute to Bratislava and, uh, and uh, bike, bike, park, bike, bike parkings at the destination stations. And, and how, how, how does the pricing work when, for example, you, you have to keep, if you want to keep the bike there uh, also during the weekend you will get the fees and all, all this stuff so so how, do, how does this work okay so I understand two questions the first question is how to deal with commuting yes Yes, you need this a very good question. Um, you need to see um, <coughs> uh, both, you have to look at, to, at both things. Um, for instance, if you, um, we know that like 20 or, or 30% of every bike rack is being used with, for two bikes at the same day. Um, and just to, to explain is uh, when I go to the, to the, um, to the station with my bike, there's a free spot, but the free spot was being taken maybe all night um, by somebody else who, who, who took their bike. So you have to look at both ways, so people coming to the station and people uh, uh, leaving the station. Uh, I saw, for instance, in uh, Trnava at, at the bike tower, half of the bike tower is full with bikes overnight. So every night, there's a hundred wrecks there, but there are 50 bikes there in the tower every night. And there are no trains overnight. So these bikes are either second bikes, so people will maybe working or going to school in, Tr in Trnava, or people don't have a place at home or a shed to bike their park, to park their bike, and, and they store there for 10 cents per day. So you have to, be aware of uh, the fact of uh, are the people going to the station or are they are they coming from the station? And we are really aware in the development process of that of that issue. And the second question, are the fee? Yes, the fee is very important. Yes, well, if the fee is important, um, 
the, the first, 20 hour, uh, first 24 hours for free is a very successful concept uh, because like in the Netherlands on average like 20-25% of the people leave their bike there over the weekend or uh, park it for two days, sometimes three days. And that's uh, where the train company earns the money. So they, they need also people to park a little bit longer because it's an it's a earning model. Well, you, 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 you can't be rich by, by exploiting bike parking stations. That's, that's a big myth. But um, uh, they need the money. So. Okay. Thank you very much. We have to finish now because we have another sure. speaker. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much.